Hello and welcome. Apparently we're having some sort of problem with the fuel tap on our Lamb Rudder right now. Be it because it's not working right, or maybe we just need a fast flow fuel tap for that larger carburetor we just installed. In either case, we've come to this video in hopes of learning the steps and how to remove and replace the existing fuel tap on a Lambretta. As you can see from the stock shots here, I only own a Series 3 Lambretta, so this will be the Lambretta we use in this video. But it should work for really any of the Series 1 through 3 Lambrettas you might own. The only real difference here will be the awkward air filter and carb system found on the earlier Lambrettas. Otherwise, everything else should be pretty much the same. So anyway, let's get started on changing out the fuel tap on a Series 3 Lambretta. For this job, you're going to need the following tools. A bladed and Phillips screwdriver, needle nose pliers, 19 millimeter open wrench, 8 millimeter socket wrench with a small spanner, small bucket or bowl, fuel can, rubber gloves, and rags. Optionally, you're going to need a wooden dowel or the wooden handle to a hammer, a rubber mallet, a small siphon manual fuel pump, and a mat of some sort so that you don't have to sit on the hard ground. So let's get started here by pulling both the left and right side cowl. You'll of course want to remove the cowl in order to expose the engine as well as access to the fuel tank and your fuel tap. Now that you have the cowls removed, you'll also want to place them both aside and out of the way so that they aren't kicked or damaged while working. First up, let's start by disconnecting and removing the air filter and rubber air hose. Start by unlatching the spring clip to the air box and pulling the hose and air filter free. Both should come loose easily. Place aside. Next up, Let's disconnect the fuel line to the carburetor. Start by finding the fuel banjo where the fuel line enters the carburetor on the right. Simply loosen the fuel line clamp and then give the fuel line a tug and it should come free from the carburetor. At this point you have two options here. You can choose to try and work around your carburetor or you can remove your carburetor. Personally, I'm going to choose to remove mine here and working around it is just a pain in the ass. But if you're going to work around the carburetor, you should jump forward in this video and skip all of this part I'm about to do, which is mainly removing the carburetor from your scooter. Next up, you'll want to disconnect the throttle cable. Locate the throttle arm on top of the carburetor. Depress this with your fingers, as this should free up the nipple end of the cable. Furthermore, you should be able to easily pull the inner cable through the cable adjuster. The next step is to remove the choke cable from the carburetor. Start by finding the choke cable where it enters the carburetor. Unscrew this at the choke top. The whole unit should then be pulled out of the carburetor. Next up, locate the carburetor clamp bolt. Loosen, but do not actually remove the bolt. Now we're ready to remove the carburetor from the engine. This is kind of tricky and can be done of one of three ways. First way, using your hands. Simply pull while slightly twisting the carburetor on the manifold back and forth. Do this over and over and over again until the carburetor slides off the manifold. Personally, this is not my favorite method and can take some time to do. The second way we can try to remove the carburetor is to grab either a long wooden dowel or the wooden handle from a hammer. Place this through the Lambretta body and place it on the lip of the carburetor and the clamp. Be careful here as it's easy to damage the carburetor. Now grab a rubber mallet and lightly tap on the end of the dowel with the rubber mallet till the carburetor comes free. The third way to try to do this is the way that the spanner's manual and scooter surgery say to handle this. Place a small rag inside the uh, mouth of the carburetor, then take that 3 8 drive extraction bar and slide it in. Working back and forth left to right left to right, left to right only. This should loosen the carburetor from the manifold. Now that you're done removing the carburetor from the manifold, take another rag and slide it into the manifold. This should keep anything from accidentally dropping down into your now exposed hole of your engine. Now it's time to empty your gas tank. You can do this in one of three ways. The first is sticking the end of the short fuel line into a gas can, then turning the fuel rod to the on position. This can get kind of tedious due to the short fuel line and the need to prop your can up on something so that it reaches. The second method is to put a small bucket or bowl under your scooter and to drain the fuel into it. The third way is to use a siphon manual fuel pump. Simply lift your seat open the gas tank. Use this to extract the fuel in your tank. 
into a gas can. Now that you've emptied the tank, we'll need to disconnect the fuel tap rod from the fuel tab. Use your needle nose pliers here. Reach and straighten out one of the cotter pins in the fuel tap rod. Once straightened, remove and pull the fuel tap rod away from the fuel tap. Now we're gonna take a screwdriver and loosen the fuel line clamp on the end of the fuel line. Once loosened, pull and it should come right off. With a 19 millimeter open wrench, it's time to start loosening the bolt that connects the fuel tap to the gas tank. Make sure to have that small bucket or bolt under the tap as you're still likely to find some residual fuel in the tank. And once it's loose, it's gonna make a mess. In order to remove the tap from the tank, start by twisting the fuel tap so that the arm will not come into contact with the engine mount then pull down and towards you as you remove it from the tank. As an optional step, with a small bucket or bowl under the tank, take some of the gas that you siphoned out and pour it back into the tank and try to clean out any of the crud that's still found in the tank. Next step, you're gonna to wanna to prep the new fuel tap. Your fuel tap has a reverse thread on it. So as you tighten it against the tank, you're also gonna tighten it up against the fuel tap. As such, you're gonna to need to prep this in order to actually properly put it on the tank. You will want the bolt somewhat loose at first so you can tighten them both as you screw it in. Insert from the bottom and ready it for tightening. Make sure it points towards the front of the scooter but turn inward towards the frame. This way the fuel tap rod won't interfere with your carburetor when you turn the fuel tap on and off. Using a 19 millimeter open wrench, tighten up the bolt against the tank and the tap. Make sure that the fuel tap stays at the angle specified above. Now that you've tightened the tap down, the next step is to prep a cotter pin and connect up the fuel tap rod to the fuel tap. Use your needle nose pliers to insert and help bend the cotter pin. The next step is to prep the fuel hose. We do this by sliding a clamp on and then sliding one end of the fuel hose onto the fuel tap. Using either a bladed or Phillips head screwdriver, tighten down the hose clamp. First up, let's start by grabbing the carburetor and reattaching the throttle to the carb body. Slide the throttle cable through the cable adjuster found at the top of the carburetor. Once pulled through, reattach the rubber grommet. Then depress the throttle arm so that you can slide the nipple on the end into the throttle cable arm. Next up, we're gonna reattach the choke assembly. Ideally, you didn't take this apart when you pulled the carburetor off the scooter. So, ideally, you should be able to slide this whole unit back in and then use a 10 millimeter spanner to reattach this. If you did take this apart, here's how you're gonna to have to put it all back together. To do this, slide the choke cable through the L-bend, then the L-bend to the choke cable adjuster, then to the, adjust, the adjuster lock nut, and then to the choke top, to the choke return spring, and finally, the nipple can go into the choke valve. All of this then will slide straight into your carburetor, and you should be able to use a 10 millimeter spanner here to tighten this all up. Next step, we're gonna reconnect the fuel line. Attach the end of the fuel line into the inlet banjo. It should simply slide on, but if needed, you can use those needle nose pliers. Now slide the fuel line clamp up so that you can clamp the fuel line to the banjo. Tighten this with either a bladed screwdriver or with a Phillips head. Now we're finally ready to reattach the carburetor to the engine. You can do this a couple different ways. First, start by rubbing a slight bit of two-stroke oil on the manifold. So the first way is you simply slide the carburetor to the inlet with your hands and slowly wiggle and push the carburetor back and forth and back and forth and push and push and eventually it should make its way on. The second way to do this is to seat the carburetor to the manifold. Now take a rag and place it over the mouth of the carburetor. Now take a rubber mallet and lightly tap, and I do mean lightly tap, the rag over the carburetor mouth until the carburetor is fully seated on the manifold. Next step, use either an eight millimeter spanner or a socket wrench and tighten the carburetor clamp. Time to reconnect the air filter and the rubber hose. Slide the air filter to the top of the air hose. Then slide the air filter to the air box. Clamp this down with the metal clamp. 